My name's Rocky Snyder. I've got a fitness studio here in Santa Cruz, California. And for a number of years, my staff and I have been teaching senior strength and conditioning at our local rehab hospital called Dignity Health at Dominican Hospital here in Santa Cruz. And so I'm going to take components of that class today and combine it into just a general fitness routine that you can do at home. Now, the beautiful thing about these live videos is that we can save them them and you can play them over and over until you're completely sick and tired of seeing my face and hearing my voice. But this is a nice thing that you could do on a daily basis. And all you simply need are the things you find in your actual living room or kitchen or wherever you might want to get up and move, whether it's an office or a study. You're going to need a chair. You're going to need a wall in which is sturdy that you can lean against, and you'll need a countertop easily found in your kitchen. So another device that you might find that is necessary are the things in the kitchen cupboard. Maybe a couple cans of corn or the vegetable of your choice. In this case, we've got garbanzo beans. They are organic and that's not important. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off actually by standing and then we're gonna transition to the chair. We're gonna go over to the wall for a few movements. Then we're gonna go to the countertop for a few. And then we're gonna finish with a little bit of interval training utilizing these cans. Now, I've got one of my trainers here, Jose Renero. He's gonna be joining us. And Jose, we're gonna start off with just waking up the soles of the feet. And so what we have here we have designed this little tool with two peanuts and they're taped together to, uh, to, well, tennis balls taped together to make a peanut. So, Jose, that's for you. There you go. It's eye hand coordination day two. Now, granted, you may not have a peanut at home, but you do have some canned corn or something like that. And so I'm going to ask you to remove your shoe. And if you'd like to, by all means, with the chair, lean up against the back side of the chair so that you have something to rest upon if you're feeling like your balance is not where it wants to be. So all I'm going to do, especially near the edge of the corner of the can, I'm going to put a little bit of pressure down there and roll out the soles of my feet. Now, we don't have to tell your dinner guests that eventually when they are invited back into your house that you've rolled your feet out with the can of whatever you're serving them dinner with. But this is just a nice way of getting massage down into the soles of your feet. We're going to just switch feet, do the same thing for about a minute. Now, a lot of people don't really consider the feet to be all that important, but if you think about it, they're the only part of our body that hits the ground on a regular basis, and we've got more than 25% of the bones of the body are found in the feet, and they're surrounded by somewhere around 100 muscle tendons and ligaments, all that tissue down there, and at the base of the foot, the sole in which I'm rolling out right now, there's about 3,000 nerve endings. And so we throw them in house slippers or in shoes or in pumps or whatever your preferred footwear is. And then we just put them through the same boring routine on man-made surfaces over and over again. So they kind of fall asleep. So now what we've just done is we've basically woken them up. Now, just walk around for a second. If you've done that with me, hopefully you have. And if not, maybe when you play this back, you can do that. And you can use just one tennis ball. If you're a dog owner and you got a dog toy, that would work out fine. Or, of course, you can use those cans once again. But now that you're standing there, how does that feel on the feet? Feels, good. feels really good. Now, Jose is quite the runner, and so he is, his feet take a tremendous pounding for the number of miles he runs throughout the day and every day of the week almost. How many days a week do you run? Five. Five days a week. He is, he's a crazy guy. All right. So those feet could really use a massage. Now, ah, oh, yeah. Those little piggies definitely want to go to market, but we're going to stay home and do some other exercises. So here's what I'd like to do. One of the classes we actually teach or have taught in the past over at the hospital was helping those that live with Parkinson's disease. And there is a group that have developed a series of exercises which are all about opening up the body. So we're going to do kind of a derivation of that. And we're going to get your body moving while in a seated position. Now, the first motion, I'm going to turn my chair a little bit so that you can see what we're going to do is we're going to reach forward in your chair 
and I'm not sitting way back in the chair, but I'm near the edge, just not too far that I'm going to topple forward. And I'm going to reach forward, and then I'm going to drop my hands down to the floor just as far as I can comfortably without any pain. And from there, I'm going to lift the arms and my torso to a nice upright tall posture. And from there, I'm just going to open up my arms and really try to open up all the muscle tissue around my chest and shoulders. And I might do a little bit of flapping of my wings back and forth like that. All right, so those are the movements that we're going to work on. Feet can be a little bit apart to allow this big old gut to get down in my lap here, all right? So you're going to reach forward with both arms, reach down to the ground, up to the sky, arms come out, and we're just going to move back and forth maybe five times. All right, I see a few people chiming in here. That's wonderful to see. So we reach forward, bring ourselves down, we reach up high, and the arms come back. So there's about three there. Let's go two more. Reaching forward, and you might notice that every time you go again, your range of motion improves. At least that's the hope. One more. Let's go reach forward, reach down, reach up, and reach back. Nice. Okay. We're going to stay at the edge of our seat. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to take my right arm and I'm just going to reach back behind me gently. Now, I don't want to try and torque and really muscle through this motion. I just want to feel, can I open and reach back there? And then I'm going to turn my torso in the opposite direction, bringing that arm with me. I'm going to bring it in front of me and then it's going to come up overhead and bend into that elbow to try and scratch your back. And then we're just going to bring it forward again and return. And we're just going to repeat this about five times. So the arm goes back to the right. We turn the body to the left, reaching up overhead with that arm. Give yourself a pat on the back. That's fantastic. Then we're going to come back around once again. Rotating left, reaching up. Now I'm adding a little bit more reach by taking my leg here and just pushing it back a little bit. We've got two more. Rotate to the right, turn the body left, reaching up while that other leg just drives back. One more. Turning the body, rotating, and now I don't know if you've noticed, but I haven't tried, it's just naturally occurring that my ability to rotate back behind me has dramatically improved. Do you notice that too, Jose? Oh yeah, he's, he's moaning and groaning. That's wonderful. Hopefully you're not moaning and groaning at home. You've just opened up the ability to move your body and take away the shackles of this shelter in place. Okay, we got to do the other side or else you'll be walking into the wall all day long. You're going to take that left arm now and I want you to reach back behind you. Notice we are practicing six feet at least. You're more like eight feet behind me. And now I'm going to rotate to the right. As I rotate to the right, that left, le that left arm comes forward. I reach up overhead, grab the back of my shoulders here, give myself a nice pat in the back. Congratulations, you've done the movement. And we rotate back again. Coming around to the right with that left arm, reaching up high, touching the back of your shoulders. There's two. Rotate left, come around to the right reaching up and back again. Three down, two remaining. Rotate. You're practically a ballerina, Jose. Look at the graceful way. You, were you in like Swan Lake or something? Growing up, I was. Wow, that's amazing. I was the ugly duckling. <laughs> there we go. All right, beautiful it is. Okay. Well, let's warm up the legs a little bit, and we got to get out of the chair eventually, so that's how we're going to start right now. We're going to reach forward like the first exercise, but instead of reaching down to the ground, you're just going to pull yourself up out of the chair, and the arms come out by your side like so. And you'll notice I turn my palms back or facing forward. That draws my shoulders back, and I get nice and tall. And then I'm going to sit back down again, turn my palms down, and reach forward. Coming back up, 
and reaching forward as I descend. Now you can come all the way to the seated posture, or if you want to elevate this up a little bit, you can just come down and barely touch and come back up again. We're going to go for five more. Here we go. Reach back with the hips. Stand tall and tuck them under. Push the hips back. Reach tall, tuck them under. We've got three more. And what we're trying to do with the weight of my arms is create a counterbalance so that I can maintain my body directly over both feet. Now, if you need to use the arm rest to get up out of the chair, that's fine. But over time, we should develop enough strength where that's not the case anymore, that you're able to do it because you've just developed a nice awakening of the leg muscles. All right, that feels pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. All right, so there we go. Now, if you have been to our Facebook page, which is Rocky's Fitness Center. This week I posted a funny little photograph of me mimicking Jack LaLanne. Well, I'm gonna mimic, mimic him once more because he's my idol, he's my hero, and he had some amazing things to offer in the 30 plus years he had that TV show going. So one of the episodes, in fact, one of his very first episodes, he just used a chair and he had people doing leg lifts. And that's what we're gonna do next. We're just going to be working on lifting the leg up. So balancing yourself, you can use the seat, the backrest of your chair if you'd like to for support. Just don't grip with a death grip if you can. And you're just gonna balance on one leg and we're gonna raise the leg out and then touch the toe back to the floor. Trying to maintain that nice tall posture. I love having Jose beside me or behind me because he appears shorter than I actually am. If it was the other way, I would definitely be Lilliputian. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll switch over to the other side. I'm going to move my chair just a little bit like so. You can just obviously walk to the opposite side of the chair and we're going to do the same thing, just raising that leg. Now, some of the muscles around the hips may restrict movement on one leg compared to the other. So just know that that's kind of what has happened over time. We've developed movement patterns that develop muscles in different ways, but that's okay. What I'm really looking for is, can you just keep that knee straight and bring the leg out just as far as that straight leg will allow, and can you do so without any pain? That's the number one thing. If you have pain, then something's not working the way that we'd like it to, and we need to kind of make some adjustments or modifications. So we just raise the legs out from side to side, but let's do this. We're just going to be in the back side of the chair with fingertips on the seat rest and on the back rest. And all we're going to do, instead of going sideways, you're going to take your foot behind you and you're just going to lift it up just a few inches. Now it's very easy to lift the foot further by bending the knee, but I'm not interested in kicking anybody behind me. I just want to juice really focus on waking up the sleeping giant. Yes, the biggest muscle of the body has this tendency to fall asleep faster than Rip Van Winkle. Yes, and he's probably been sleeping more than 20 years like Rip. So there you go, let's switch legs, the same thing. All my trainers, I have t-shirts older than them. And right now they're shaking their heads going, what's he talking about, who is Rip Van Winkle? Stay in school kids, you'll be all right, that's it. There we go. All right. Rip Van Winkle, it's a tall tale. The guy stayed up in the Catskill Mountains, slept for 20 years until he heard this bowling like thunder and he woke up and he came down. I'll, I'll read you the story for bedtime later. Don't you worry. Okay, so we have got the leg lifts and we've, uh, we've got a little bit more action here. Let's do squats. Tell you what, if you're okay with bringing yourself on the backside here and just holding on, you're gonna bring your feet a little bit wider apart than you normally do. And you're going to lower yourself down as if you're sitting in a chair. Now for some of you, you're thinking, uh, no, that chair is gonna to topple over and I'm gonna go over tea kettle-like and I don't wanna do that. Well, that's fine. You don't necessarily have to. You can be on the front side of the chair and just practice sitting because you're really good at that most likely, most Americans are, and we wanna get out of that chair. So here's what you're gonna do. You're just gonna hold on to the backside and you're gonna go back up and forth. See, we're really good at getting into the chair. We struggle getting out of it. And now that we're in shelter in place and we're locked in on Facebook, looking at singing dogs and sleeping kittens for hours at a time, imagine what that's doing to our body. Ridiculous. 
So we just kind of break away from it. This, I think, is the only time you should actually be watching Facebook because it's doing something good for you. Okay, what else do we want to do with the chair? I know we want to move sideways. So I'm going to be very rude and turn my backside toward you because you can see from this angle a much better way of doing it. Feet are together, and I want you to step over to one side and then step to the other side. Okay, so now that you know how to do it, I'm going to face this direction once more. So you can hold on here, and if you'd like to try and hold on with just one arm, you're welcome to do it. But we're just going to step to the left, and we're going to bring our weight onto that stepping leg, stepping right and left. Step to the right, bring your weight onto that right leg, step to the left. Now, we watch Jose doing this, and he's trying to break some world record of step distance here. And I'm just waiting for the snap or the sproing or the tear to occur. But, you know, he's young and vibrant and all that. Maybe there's a few of you that want to try and do that. Just watch out because you, you may be sitting longer if you do that. He's good. Now, don't feel like you have to go that far. Of course, you can take a shorter stride. All we're doing simply actually here is we're doing a little fall prevention. Can I take my body mass somewhere, stop it, and then redirect it somewhere else because most of the time when we're falling we'll lose our balance and our mass will go somewhere and it's a question of whether or not we're able to get there fast enough and slow things down to catch ourselves or if that doesn't happen then we go to the ground all right so there's some lateral lunges or lateral steps and we did several of them we've done some leg lifts and we've done some squats now of course you can do several more over the course of the next day or so we call each group of movement a set and the number of repetitions in a set can vary but typically 10 would be a great number to build up to you can try and get up to 20 if you'd like to i think that once you get to 20 then you can develop numbers of sets of repetitions rather than just trying to keep on going with one set of a thousand all right so those are a few chair exercises simple enough getting up and down stepping lifting one leg in different directions let's go to the wall next so i've got this wall here it's just our center post that we're going to use and what we'll be doing is we're going to be using the wall to one open up our hips by swinging it back and forth and then another one we're going to do is sitting against it and we're actually going to try and do maybe a little bit of uh, um, driving of the knees. So the first one, what I'd like to do is you're going to have one, both hands holding against the wall. And one leg will be lifted off the floor and in front of your body. And I would like you to swing your leg gently across left to right. Now, yes, by swinging the leg back and forth, we are kind of waking up that hip and opening it up. But my focus, to be honest, is the one, the leg that's not moving for the most part. It's just standing there while everything rotates around it. So as the leg swings in front of the body, can you feel how the pelvis or the hips rotate along with it? And when the leg swings back to its same side, how that allows the pelvis to rotate too. So we're just getting some opening going on through the muscles surrounding the hips and pelvis. Now, I'm just going to switch legs and do the same thing. Now, you'll notice I'm not trying to go all ballistic with this. I'm not trying to turn into a Dallas Cowboy cheerleader because I, I don't think they're actually accepting applications right now. Their season seems to be on hold. But I just want to get my leg just swinging and see if I can just use the momentum and that pendulum effect to allow the hips just to relax and open up. Now, of course, if you want to challenge your balance a little bit more, you don't have to have a death grip on the wall. You can just have fingertips. And if you'd like to, you can even remove one, one hand from it. And you can just have fingertips completely, maybe one fingertip. Just by reducing the amount of assistance, you'll probably increase the intensity of the exercise. Okay. So what we can also do is use this wall to really work on our single leg balance and our ability to open up all the muscle tissue that usually gets locked down when we sit. So how do I want to open up that tissue? Well, I could take a step back and try and force it, but a lot of times that just jams up my lower back. But I know that when I bring one leg up, 
into flexion, this leg has to extend and open up. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're just going to support both fingers, uh, both hands against the wall. And I think I'm just going to face this direction so you can see a little bit better. And I'm going to raise one knee up as much as I can without being forceful and muscling through this. And I'm just going to alternate back and forth. And you'll see that as I raise the leg up, I'm actually lifting my big toe and the, the roof of my foot upward also. That driving upward with this leg is going to allow this area to open up. And what I want to try to do as well is maintain a nice tall posture as I just march in place. Now, I like using the wall because it tells me that I'm not leaning forward or leaning back because if I leaned forward, my elbows would bend. And if I leaned back, I would lose contact with the wall. So by having my hands extended or my arms extended with my hands touching the wall, it just tells me exactly where I am in space. So just doing this high marching is kind of a nice exercise to really open up the hips. At the same time, we're strengthening the legs, which we want to do a little bit more of. And because we're so inclined into that seated position throughout our society, you know, we go to work in wheelchairs, we call cars. We sit at a desk that probably has a wheel underneath it too. So if you think about it, we're, we're selectively engaged in an existence of being in wheelchairs. So now we're in an air chair. All I want you to do is bring the feet out far enough that you're, when you slide a few inches down the wall, the knees bend and they go out maybe over the heels, the ankles. If my feet were too close to the wall, then the knees would be out in front of the feet and that's a lot of undue strain and pressure on the knees. And that's the last thing I want to do is create pressure around your knees. So if you're feeling pressure in the knees, chances are your feet aren't far enough outward or you're trying to go down too far or maybe a few other things. Now as I slide down slightly, I'm going to feel my lower back start to gently contact the wall. Hopefully yours will too because my lower back is flattening out as my hips descend. And where the pressure is in my feet is right around my heels. In fact, I would like to wiggle my toes to give me a sense that, yeah, there's the pressure, and now you feel all those wonderful muscles on the top of your thighs starting to wake in, and, and maybe there's a little heat going on there. And once it's too much or you've reached enough, then just go ahead and slide on up the wall or in some cases slide down and then you can pick yourself up, use the chair or whatever you need to do, but hopefully you didn't go down too far. The interesting thing here is those muscles that you just woke up, they are some of the largest postural muscles of the body, meaning they help maintain proper posture. And if these fall asleep because we've been sitting too long or whatever the case may be, then other muscles like the lower back and others maybe around the neck are going to have to seize up to try and do more work to support your frame. So by waking up these muscles, those quadricep muscles, being some of the biggest muscles in the body, then the lower back actually feels quite nice now. There's a release of pressure and tension. That's pretty nice. So we've done a little bit of leg swings and some knee drives, and now we just did what we call the air sit or the wall sit. Okay, let's move over to a kitchen counter or a countertop. You might even find it in your office study. You can use your desktop. So we're going to use, in this case, I've got this blue box, which is sort of about desk height. And what we're going to do here is with this, we're going to do a, a few movements that you can use at home with your desk. So for one, I can have myself positioned in what we might consider a plank or a full body kind of rigid position, almost like a bridge. I might want to bring my feet out a little bit and all I want to do is take one out, arm out away from the side and bring it back to the desktop. And let's just stay with that side. So the hand comes back to the desk and I reach back. Now the arm that is supporting me of course is doing a lot of work. And the further back my feet walk the more work is going to be in the upper body. Now if you've got osteoporosis you want to watch out about how much you turn. It could be that the spinal column's not as strong or as thick as bone density as we'd like. So just be aware of this. One thing you could do is turn the hips more 
So that think of turning your belly button. And then what begins to happen is now I really start to feel a whole bunch of other muscles as soon as I changed how my body moved. Now there's quite the difference. If I don't move my belly button and just reach with my arm, then there's a lot of strain in the shoulder and I might feel it in my lower back. So I do really want to move my hips with this action and that frees up my ability to move and look how much further I can bring my arm. So we'll just do the same thing to the opposite side a few times. And you'll see by turning into my hips, my feet actually might pivot as well. And my shoulders and chest open up while at the same time really working on my arm strength. Now, of course, we're not doing a lot of lifting, but our body weight is enough resistance that's built in that I'm really working those muscles to support me. And by moving my head back and forth, it's a beautiful way of gaining a better sense of balance because those little items inside our ears, that semicircular canal and the other parts of the vestibular system are really sending a lot of messages to the brain to tell me where I am in space whenever I turn my head. So there is what we might call a T stabilization. We make the letter T bring the arm out. Okay, we've already done some knee drives, but what we could do with the counter are actually getting the arms to move back and forth. So I'm going to practice some push-ups. So with my hands on the counter, I'm going to lower my body toward the edge of the counter, and then I'm just going to press away. Now, I guess I could have done this against the wall if I had a, a wider wall that I was demonstrating with, and we could perform wall push-ups. And if you can consider this a little bit lower, it's obviously going to be a little bit more demanding, kind of like a limbo contest. The lower the object is that you're pushing up and off of, well, the harder it's going to be. So if you find that you're proficient with this and you've been exercising a long time and push-ups or this kind of exercise is not all that demanding, then I would encourage you to find an object that's a little bit lower and then lower and lower and lower until you pro can progress maybe into Jack LaLanne's one-arm push-ups. But for me, <laughs> I'm going to stay right here for right now. Okay. Beautiful. All right. Now, the other exercise I would like to encourage is a single leg balance. And we're still standing beside the counter. And I've got the hand that's closest to the counter or desktop right on here. And I'm kind of just making sure I'm not going to go anywhere. I'm going to take the leg that's inside, closest to that counter, and I'm just going to reach back a little bit. And then I'm just going to bring that leg forward again, reaching back and coming forward. Now, what I could do with my free hand here is I could reach down to one of the desk drawers and then come back up. Or if it is your kitchen that you're using, maybe down to the bottom drawer where you keep the pots and pans or aprons or whatever you have there. And I just want to see, can I maintain balance on this leg and let my body move back and forth? From a profile, this is kind of what it's looking like. Now, I'm bringing that leg back and up, but if you feel like it and you just want to slide it toward the ground back and forth like that, well, that's a nice way of doing it. So let's do the other leg. Same thing. We're just switching hands. I might be facing this direction, but be very rude. I'm just going to turn this way. The leg closest to that hand is going to be the one that's off the ground, and I'm just going to reach down. If any of you are golfers, you might think of this as a golfer's bend where you're going to reach down and grab the ball out of the cup and bring it back up again. You just have to hold on to the golf club here, in this case the desk or countertop. There you go. I understand golf courses are not uh, part of the shelter in place in some areas, so there's a lot of social distancing. Hopefully you're getting out there. If you're one that likes going for walks with an item on your shoulder, there you go. All right. So. There's our countertop exercises. We did a whole bunch of things there. Uh, what I'd like to do next is we're going to get the arms moving and we're going to get the timer going on the back wall there. And you'll need a couple of cans of vegetables or if you've got dumbbells, I would recommend nothing heavier than eight pounds. 
And uh, if you don't have eight pound dumbbells and you're feeling kind of up and at them with this one, you could grab two gallons of water. Water jugs, a gallon each is eight pounds. So you can do the math. You got half gallons, you got four pound dumbbells, There's a whole bunch of ways to, to create dumbbells. In this case, I'm going to get my nice S&W organic garbanzo beans. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a whole bunch of upper body movements. And I might encourage you to walk around or move the feet at the same time. We're going to try and get some coordination going on. And we're we're going to work for 20 seconds at a time. After 20 seconds of work, you'll get a 10 second reprieve, a little catch, catch your breath. And we're going to do this for a total of eight rounds. Now, I'll say if you're unaccustomed to these movements and you're feeling yourself get a little bit gassed and out of breath, then please go ahead and have a seat. I don't want anybody getting dizzy, but we will be going straight through for eight repetitions, eight sets that is. If you feel like you want to come back after you've recovered, by all means, please do. And over time, if you've only done maybe three or four and you said, that's it, I'm done, maybe you can build up as the weeks go by. All right, so I'm going to set the timer up. It's going to give us a little 10 second countdown. When you hear the beep, we're going to get going. Cans in hand, and we're going to start out by just reaching overhead. Ready? And here we go. Arms up. And as you do this, I would love to see that your body is free flowing. So when one arm comes up, the hips move side to side. So we're going to get some dance moves going here. See if you can unlock the hips every time the arm raises up overhead. Almost there. There we go. So we got 10 seconds now. So we just got the hips and body moving side by side. Let's do rotational. So you're going to take the arm across the body at about shoulder height. Here we go. Shoulder height and rotate. Rotate. Now, to prevent yourself from getting dizzy, just keep your head facing forward and let the body rotate under it. If you don't have any balance issues and you want to let your head go with you, by all means you can. Just know that's very intense in terms of how much more uh, balance is required in coordination. So we did overhead, we did side to side. Tell you what, let's go over to the opposite side overhead now. So you're reaching over. And now you're really accentuating the hips gliding left to right. Oh. Now, if you want to take your time with this and turn it into a wonderful stretch, you're welcome to do that. Let those hips move. That will encourage more opening of the muscles. Beautiful. All right. I'm going to challenge your balance now. We're going to have one foot in front of the other. They don't have to be touching, but you're on more of a tightrope. And we're going to go here and here. So one arm reaches out to one side, then the other. Of course, if this feels unsafe, by all means, go to a stance that you're feeling safe with. If you're feeling a little wobbly and you just want to bring the foot out a little bit wider, you can do that too. Well, that's pretty good. Okay. Now, instead of bringing them up overhead, we're going to go down. I'm going to step to one side and step to the other side. We're going to get pretty quick. So step to the right and reach across with the opposite hand. Step to the left, reach across with the right. Step to the right, reach with the left. Step to the left, reach with the right. So now we're really challenging your ability to stop your body's mass from going in one direction and then redirect it somewhere else. All right, well, that's pretty cool too. Staying with me, now we're going to go forward and backwards with our steps, and we're going to take both cans and drive together forward and then pull them back. Stepping forward and pulling back. Now, you can keep the cans at shoulder or chest level, but we can also drive them deeper so that you're leaning over a little bit more. That's going to give you a little bit more intensity. You should begin feeling your heart rate increase because we're using more muscles as we step. Pretty good. Let's do this. We're going to take the cans and we're going to turn off to one side when we step in that direction. And then we come back to center, step in the opposite direction and back to center. Stepping right, we reach right. Stepping left, we reach left. We've just got one more set to do after this. Believe it or not, we're almost done with the workout. You've been doing great. We've gotten that body to move in all three dimensions of space. Last one. Let's just get those cans shaken up. I got garbanzo beans. You know, we're going to make some 
What is that? Hummus. Yes. If I shake them up far enough, we're going to make some good hummus here. Get the chips out. After this workout, you're going to have yourself a really nice appetizer. So let those arms go back and forth. Now, hopefully, you're really practicing grip strength right now so we don't send the cans flying to the ceiling. But keep on going. If you want to walk around, oh, there we go. We just did it. Eight rounds, 20 seconds of work with a 10 second break in between. That's brilliant. <clears throat> All right, I'm just gonna bring the chair back in here. So now we can sit back down and you can really appreciate the joy of sitting. All right, those legs should be feeling quite nice. In fact, let's bring one of those legs right on up here. And if you can cross it over like so, that's wonderful. If you still have your shoes on, that's fine. But if you don't, I just want you to either way, grab onto your foot, and we're just gonna make gentle circles in each direction, maybe about four or five circles. Just let those ankles open up a little bit. Great. We'll take the other leg up, same thing. Just see if you can unlock some really beautiful circular motion with the ankles here. Then we just reverse directions. You know what we should do, and I didn't think about it when I had the other foot in my hand, but let's just do this. We're going to take the big toe, and you're gently going to stretch out the muscles surrounding the big toe. And the reason why is because, as far as joints go, this has got to be one of the most critical joints to move properly in your whole body. Because if this joint does not move the way it should, then we don't push off the ground the way we should, which means the hips don't react the way they should, and they don't really open up, so we stay congested. And if the hips are congested, then other areas are going to compensate, like the knees or the lower back, or maybe even as far away as the neck. I'm just going to switch feet and do the same thing here. So I'm just taking my big toe, and I'm just encouraging it to pull and stretch a little bit. You're not going to get a tremendous amount of movement here, say as much as like a knee, obviously, or a hip, but we're still getting some nice movement in that big toe. And the interesting thing is when you do big toe stretches and walk around, you'll be amazed how much lighter your body feels and how much more open your hips move and how much better your back or neck might feel. All right. So we'll just do a little bit more cool down. What I like to do is we're going to do a bit of a stretch on the chest and you're just going to reach back and grab the backrest of the chair. The other hand is just going to hold my knees from turning with me as I turn my torso a little bit to the right. Now remember, we don't want to crank on this. We don't want to try and be as forceful as possible, but I just want to open up that area. Think of lifting through the chest or the sternum as you make that rotation. We don't want to see any collapsing. Okay, and then we're just going to do the same thing other side, bracing the knees from rotating, reaching back. Can I lift myself up here in a nice tall posture and then just take my head and look over my shoulders? Because wherever the eyes travel, the head will follow and so will the rest of the body. Which next week when we do senior fitness, we're actually going to do a lot of visual drills and a lot of balance drills. Today we got the movement going on in all three dimensions, but there's so many other cool little exercises or drills we can do to improve balance. And most of the balance comes from our eyes. And if our eyes are not sending the right messages to our brain, that's gonna muddy the way in which we balance ourselves. So the final stretch we're gonna do is for those inside thigh and the back of the thigh muscles. You're just going to have one leg extended with the foot pointed upward. In this seated posture, I have my other leg bent and I can put some support on here. And I'm just going to slide my fingers down the inside of my leg. And can I get down to the ankle? Can I get down further to the arch of the foot? Can you reach past it? Yeah, no showing off now, just whatever you can do. If it's only to the halfway down the calf muscle or to the knee, that's fine. That gives you a starting point from which to begin working. Now, one thing that might help is just exhaling as you reach. Let the air out and let everything kind of deflate. 
and then go ahead and breathe in and feel how breathing in air into that midsection actually lifts you up like a ballast or like a balloon. And then breathe on out one more time. Let everything just wind down. And then breathe in back again to return to the upright posture. Let's do the same thing. Other leg, we want to take the roof of the foot and kind of pull it toward you. That'll encourage this knee to stay extended. Support yourself with the other leg if you'd like. And now we're just going to let the arm reach downward. Now chances are, I did not tell you which leg to put forward. You just chose the one that you were probably more flexible with. So this second time around, well, I think you're probably experiencing quite an awakening as to the difference between your flexibility from one leg to the next, if you weren't already aware of it. Breathe out as you go down, let everything sink into it, and breathe in on the way up. <sighs> okay, simple movements you can do every day, chair, wall, kitchen sink, or desktop, that's all you really need to get moving. Now, like I say, we have, we'll record this and we'll keep it on our Facebook post. You can come back. In fact, if you click over on the left-hand side of the screen where it says videos, just below discussion, you can go to a whole bunch of videos that we have in terms of the workouts. And there are several that we call senior strength conditioning. So you can check those out as well because they were a little different than today.